What's going on guys, Kaga here. Today we're going to go over who are the best characters in the game. Let's jump into it. Eternal Evolution. Play now for free. So if we take a look right here, I actually had this ready on the 11th. I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, I just haven't been able to sit down and do it. But uh, this is what I have right here. Uh, go ahead and take a screenshot if you wish, but I will be going over all of them and why I picked them in this order. So starting with tanks. So Pandemonium I have at the top, uh, not because he is the best tank or he can do the most in the game, but because the entire mechanic of the tank team is Pandemonium and the commander. Whereas Teresh, I would say, is the strongest of all of them that it can be used in the most amount of things, followed very, very closely by Wamagon. Uh, these two are, uh, I would say, Teresh slightly above Wamagon, but they are really right next to each other in my opinion. Zeta, as far as an actual tank tank, she's probably the best, but she can't keep herself alive as well as Wamagon with his healing or Teresh with his shields. But she does do surprisingly high damage on the tank team, due to her HP as damage type abilities. Uh, Arisa, uh, I, ha I would have had lower, but while I used all five of these units on my uh, free-to-play journey when I initially started the game, as well as when I just recently did the uh, free-to-play experience, and Arisa, you get her super early, and she does get outshined by these other triple S's. But she is very, very powerful, especially when you aim her ultimate yourself. You get a lot out of this 100% uh, when you're uh, canceling skills because of you timing your stun. Vegnus, uh, very, very powerful. Uh, only slightly behind Orisa, in my opinion. Followed closely by Boar. Uh, Boar, uh, if you're doing mainly auto, uh, Boar, out of these five down here, is probably the best, just because he has the big health pool, he turns the, uh, once he would die, he turns the max HP into, uh, additional HP, so as far as actually tanking, he's really good, and then he flips people to the back, Oak and Kuwait, are decent but i wouldn't really uh think about them too much next into assassins uh so assassins is a weird team because they're kind of a uh everyone kind of works together to give them what they're looking for you have uh Caraxia that gives everyone attack hp and uh, life after death you have dominic that gives that uh, takes everyone's crit damage that everyone's trying to do and turns that into additional damage. Uh, and then you have Rickert, who is uh, giving everyone soul swords. And then when he does his ultimate, he throws them all in. Uh, you have Bailey, who boosts the rest of the uh, assassins as well. So the whole idea of assassins is to boost each other. We'll also see that with the Summoner in just a minute. But Caraxia has to be at the top because uh, the whole SP thing. She gets EX40. She gives everyone life after death, which allows them to uh, win matches that they shouldn't win. Uh, she gives a huge bonus to attack and HP. Gotta be number one. Dominic, definitely number two. Uh... He uh, He's plug and play, you use him everywhere, especially in list battles, he's used in all of them. Uh, Rickert, uh, very interesting mechanic, turning everyone else's crit rate into his crit rate. I like that a lot, as well as the more you get rewarded by having more assassins, because his damage will spike. 
Halentis is very, very powerful, uh, can be used in most game modes on the assassin team. The only thing that she does not shine in is she is a ranged assassin. So uh, when you have these things where it's the circle like Terradome, uh, she does not shine in those game modes because she doesn't spend a lot of time inside the circle. Uh, she jumps in, blows her load, and jumps back out. So she's good in most game modes, but not ones that are traditionally assassin. Bailey has fallen down a bit. Uh, if you don't have uh, Craxia and you are in a circle type situation like Terradome, uh, Bailey would be your number three. Uh, down here at the bottom two, uh, right now we're using uh, Rakana in what you call it, the uh, Endless Battle, but that's because Bailey is not a uh, bonus point character, and uh, if Bailey was a bonus point character, even the same number, it would be Bailey as our unit. Rakana, just because of their base attack speed is so high, uh, and their recharging of their skill, they're a bit up, and then Randall following at the bottom. Summoners. So, uh, I have Sif at the top. As I said, summoners are also uh, some of their parts kind of thing. They all kind of fuel each other, and Sif is probably the biggest fuel for the fire. Uh, she has a taunter, she has an AoE, she... Uh, gives crit rate crit damage to their team which Kalaza also does but Kalaza only does this until they crit and then it goes back down to zero and then it goes up little by little whereas Sif is just always you give that to Gobo then we have Dorley who gives everyone damage bonus when you have her at EX30 uh, they kill the frontline tank her summon you get to immediately resummon it uh, get that knock up, get that damage bonus, and just go for the team. And she also is the quote unquote tank, as you can put her in the tank slot in the front. And then she has the same uh, mechanic as Rebecca, where she teleports to the back and then stays in the back. Uh, Daniel, uh, I have him only slightly above Ampu because uh, they both bring a lot of similar things uh ampu is probably going to do more damage in the summoner team but daniel can be used in all game modes with different teams mix match what have you that's the only reason i gave him the edge is because uh ampu has to be in the summoner team whereas uh daniel can be used anywhere uh, they both have AoE stuns and a bunch of cool stuff going on. The only thing you got to keep in mind with Ampu is he deals the damage, not the summons. So the new summoner gear doesn't really work on him. Uh, then we have Sorvali, who, uh, if you have a maxed out ruler ring, uh, you don't really need Sorvali, but she is like an engine for Ampu. But we still have Sif, who is also an engine for Ampu but it's just like an extra engine. So this is kind of a flex slot in the actual team where she does do cool things, but with she's kind of getting slowly pushed out because of uh, the options of other characters before her. Uh, Kalaza, if you're doing the endless battles right now, he uh, is one of the two options, him or Senway at the back, but I believe uh, Kalaza on average disses out more. It is percentage based because of how his uh, crit rate situation works but on average he should be pushing out more damage in most game modes. Muka uh, is surprisingly um, he's super super good all the way up until he's not. So in the very beginning of the game uh, where you don't have any of the four piece sets uh, he's going to feel like he does nothing. But the moment you unlock things like uh, Marauder, things like this, or start getting these uh, HP into attack kind of situations, then he's going to skyrocket and be one of your better units, especially 
summoner team or even just as a frontline unit in something like Terror Dome. But then the moment you start gearing everybody out and then start getting pushed out by the triple S's, he immediately goes to bed. Uh, Score and Hattie never has a place, not anymore. Uh, but she is a triple S, so she is above Senway, even though in specifically uh, this endless battle, Senway does fine. And then we have the Hunters. And I did not put the new Hunter because, as you saw, I made this before she was added. Uh, I would put her in number three if I was to do it right now. So I put Becca in the front. Uh, the main thing with Hunters is they do knockbacks, stuns, which the commander does as well as uh, Becca does, as well as Becca gives them the thing that they had the hardest trouble with, and that is the survivor ability. She gives them pretty much the only thing that they have, minus the two demon sisters who have their own revives at EX30. Uh, Becca can also, as as I said previously with how uh, Dorley works, you can put her in that front row slot and then she'll teleport to the back. Uh, then we have Rosaris. Uh, she has a semi-reliable fear ability uh, as well as she is really, really good at two target bosses, which she was literally made for uh, Diska Caves, which is a two boss dungeon. In PvP, she can do fine because she's hitting the two fronts, as well as has that revive and is boosting the other team, the rest of the team, with attack speed, uh, which kind of is why we have pushed out Azina previously. Uh, Moriyami is a powerful unit, but really... You struggle to find places where you use her. That's the trouble that the Hunter team has. These older characters have been pushed out. And even though, as you see, Hunter uh, has more than is on this list. Uh, but a lot of the older characters are being pushed out. Emma uh, does still do really good damage. Uh, the, the thing that we have right now is with the Endless Battles right now, uh, they're considering her the same tier as some of these other characters for a point bonus, which is why uh, she's not the preferred unit and Taylor is. Um, but Emma is still a valued character as a hunter player, uh, but her time is nigh. Prigor uh, is only this high because Moriyami exists. They kind of feed off of each other. If Moriyami uh, wasn't here, Pragor would be a lot lower. Uh, Taylor, some could argue, uh, could be up a slot or two because of uh, he's used in some places. He's also used in some bosses that no hunter is, but his base stats are lower than these other triple S's. Uh, but I do have him above something like Azina. Azina very specifically boosts one unit makes one guy hit like a truck gives them a bunch of attack speed but now that we have these uh gears that we can have six seven hundred attack speed already she's not really needed uh and bot mark over little john energy i'm putting uh jaina over nord jaina kills nord uh, Nord goes invincible, Jaina kills him through invincible. Uh, she doesn't, I've, I've heard the, uh, the talk about, well, you know, Jaina is probably one of the highest damage dealing units in the game, but Nord is Nord. That's fine. Uh, Nord, in my opinion, has been slowly being phased out. Uh, he really needs something like light gap or whatnot to even get to his ultimate because his stats are being phased out where in a way that uh he is dying or getting close to dying before he even gets that ultimate off that ultimate should full re uh full heal him and if you have a res on your team then you can battery him but that's needing another character to do his thing 
Whereas Jaina just does her thing. And in that same situation of having a res on your team, Jaina, every time she lasers, her laser does progressively more damage. So laser, Nord down to 30%. Uh, you res heal your Nord. Okay, I res my Jaina. Laser. Okay, now you're down to 20%. Uh, from full. And then, you know, one or two more. And then everyone's dead. Uh, Ravenna and Luke are really, really close. I put Ravenna above because of her uh, pure damage output. Uh, Luke, I kind of like the mechanic he has there where he can be a crit build or a, f or a full true damage build. Uh, Falvea, I believe, is the highest of the uh, non-triple S's here. She's also one that you uh, want to build up if you're a newer player. Because there is uh, bonuses for bringing her up. Uh, Soyeta is a very powerful unit in the early game. And it's probably how you're going to get through Diska Caves early on in the game. Nautilus is a triple S but has really really fallen off. Kane and Omar. Uh, I've seen one guy talk about his Omar still dishes out the damage. I don't see it. I've played around with it as well as Kane. And I believe Kane is above Omar. Vanguards. Uh, Barog I still have as the top. Because he is like the boss monster of the Vanguard team in my opinion. Uh, not everyone's building him really the right way. Uh, he does need some accuracy to do the things he needs to do. Pull someone in. Do his thing. Heck, even when we have the uh, Vanguard bosses. Uh... Even in this last Twilight Lands, on the Vanguard uh, mini boss, you could put Barag by himself, and he will uh, stay alive the entire time just by himself, uh, just because of that rage mechanic. Then we have Ares, uh, which you know they can do well against assassins uh, if you have them maxed out, maxed out, maxed out. But anything maxed out is going to do really, really well. Uh, but he's very, very good. Uh, <clears throat> Leo, he's still he's still usable. Uh, we're seeing him come out as a hunter vanguard. Uh, Crete, I actually have thought about putting Crete under Nafeng, uh, just because uh, Nafeng can uh, do the flips and some really interesting things, as well as the bleed, which is a vanguard mechanic that is not used. Uh, but uh, Crete giving you that damage bonus and uh, scaling off the defense really makes him a little bit better. Uh, Artis d still dishes out damage. You might not realize this, but uh, of course you get energy back when you kill someone. But if, if uh, Artis ults a unit and they die within a couple seconds, he gets almost an entire energy bar back ready to ultimate again which also gives him attack speed uh, which also gives him a um, damage bonus so he's a very very solid unit and if he had triple s stats we might see him in other game modes guan yu is guan pu uh if the bleed effect really mattered in the game then we would see nothing and guan yu much higher last but not least support uh fiona has to be number one in my opinion uh, just because she does amazing obviously in her team uh, assassins uh, she does things based off of dashes so vanguards can trigger her Taylor can trigger her uh, Mooka can trigger her things like this uh, as well as uh, her damage boost and whatnot also works in um, Things like energy for spider and some other game modes. Uh, a very close to second would be uh, Miranda. Uh, Miranda giving me injections, uh, boost, shield. Uh, it really just feels like Fiona is a Miranda 2.0. Rez. Uh, Rez gets used everywhere. Uh, if support was just a healing tier, then... Uh, Mazrani would be number one probably, but support, uh, Rez I have at number three, uh, he gives energy, 
he does minus energy to the enemy team you build him with attack speed uh in almost all the speed teams he is a needed unit and every pvp team gets better for having a res on your team then we have moriyami that does heals attack up uh constant heals miranda i mean um serena who does uh aoe uh heals everyone on the map regardless of their distance uh i always mess up his name but you can get him from the advanced recruitment as a triple s if you take all the um elites out you have a higher chance of getting him but uh he does do some interesting support mechanics but he's not really a healer uh loran towards the beginning of the game loran was probably the uh as far as healing it would have been serena but as far as support it would have been loran uh just because of that uh confusion um the heal the defense up and a bunch of cool things he brings to the game i did not put bada on this list because i believe bada is f uh functionally not really working uh she does a massive heal but it's the amount the distance you can't really do anything with that let me know what you guys think until next time guys